Hi, this is Joanne, and I have two books to recommend to you today. Uh, one is written by a brand new author. This is her first book, and the other is written by a pro in the field of science writing. Uh, both books uh, have to do with the atom and the nucleus, and um, about quantum physics as well. The first book I want to introduce to you today is called The Age of Entanglement When Quantum Physics Was Reborn by Louisa Gilder. And Louisa Gilder is a young um, author, first book on the thing, and she did a smashing job with her debut. I really enjoyed this book. If we take a look at the cover, turn it on its side, and if we could piece back together what's missing, what uh, the image that emerges back here is from the 1927 Fifth Solvay International Conference uh, on Electrons and Photons. And at that time, this was when quantum physics was being introduced to the world. Um, of course, that started in 1900 with Max Planck, and we've got Einstein. So people in this image include Paul Ehrenfest, who's Einstein's good friend, uh, Schrodinger, Pauli, Heisenberg, Dirac, De Broglie, Compton, Born, Niels Bohr, uh, Max Planck, Marie Curie, uh, Lorentz, and Langevin. Um, just all of these uh, incredible players in that field. I know I didn't name all of them because there were many of them in that image. Um, and what Louisa decided to do was to uh, dig up letters and uh, conversations between um, various uh, important people in the field of quantum physics all the way from 1900 through uh, today. So she shows that quantum physics didn't end when World War II came along, that when Einstein died, uh, people were still interested in quantum physics, quantum mechanics, and how we're trying to use that to our advantage today, understanding all of these uh, interesting things that, that sort of contradict our um, way of looking at the world. So intuitively, Everything about uh, quantum physics does not match our day-to-day -day life. Um, and she does a marvelous job explaining uh, the different ways, uh, the different discoveries without using math. So she did this qualitatively, and I think she did a beautiful job. Uh, the main character in this book happens to be John Stuart Bell, who is, uh, or was, rather, a uh, theor theoretical physicist at CERN. And uh, what he did was take some of Einstein's ideas, uh, along with a few others, and to come up with um, a concept that uh, essentially acts as this bridge from this uh, former time of quantum physics to the modern time. I'm not going to try to explain it because I can't, but Louisa does a very nice job. Um, and uh, I, I listened to this a while ago, so I think I, I mostly spent time forgetting some of the information, but she did do a lovely job. Another thing that's really great in this book are these uh, images uh, that she sketched, or mostly she sketched. Um, turns out she's a great pencil artist. So here we have uh, Max Born drawn in pencil, and uh, this was the work of the author. Very, very nice. Um, this book by far uh, is, is the best compilation of all of the major players in quantum physics that I am aware of. Uh, there are a lot of books that are primarily biographies and of course talk about the people that interact with each other, but this one really came out as a big conversation and that really is how science is done. We do our experiments, we write our papers, but mostly we're spending time conversing with other scientists about our ideas. Um, very good book. Um, so I am highly recommending both books. The Age of Entanglement by Louisa Gilder, a good long book to read or to listen to, but well worth it.